Um, I'm sorry that we're all here again in 2013. Um, I've been here every year for the past five years. Um, but I want to tell two stories today. One is about urgency and another is about hope. And I'm going to start with urgency. Um, I went to Guantanamo last month to visit a client. His name is Ghalib Al-Bahani. This is his name. He's a young man from Yemen who's been detained without charge since 2002 for 11 years. The government says he was an assisted cook for a group that no longer exists. The DC Circuit Court upheld his det detention as they have reflexively in every detainee appeal so far. And the court behind me declined to uh, review his appeal as they have in every case since they granted the right to detainees to be able to challenge their detention. For that reason, Ghalib Al-Bahani has spent a third of his life in a prison camp on a US military base in Cuba. We cannot allow Ghalib and the other men the government never intends to charge to lose another year at Guantanamo after 11 years. We cannot meet here again in 2014 to mark another anniversary, another year of death and decline for the men detained. We must this year commit to do everything in our power to tell the facts, to tell the stories, to hold Yemen responsible for demanding the return of its citizens, most of whom are cleared but can't leave because of a continuing ban on all transfers to that country, to hold the international community responsible for offering safe havens to the dozen men who fear torture in their home countries and need resettlement if they're ever to leave Guantanamo, like our client Jamela Mezian, whose name is also out there, and to continue relentlessly to hold the Obama administration responsible for the promise it made four years ago this month to close the prison. The time has to be now. But alongside this struggle, I wanna talk about some hope. Um, I spoke yesterday to an individual I, I formerly uh, detained at Guantanamo. His name is Mohammed Kantumani. He was 17, he's a Syrian man. He was 17 when he was detained and sold uh, for bounty to the US along with his father. He was held without charge for over seven years. He was a young man, he was 17, a child, when he was uh, taken into custody, and his pain at Guantanamo was intense. It was very bleak for him. Um, he tried to hurt himself several times, and in 2009, he told me he didn't think he could take it any longer. But later that year, he was cleared and he was resettled. He's now in Europe. His reintegration has been slow, but he is rebuilding and he is healing. Um, and he is like hundreds of other men who are also re rebuilding whose stories we don't hear enough about alongside the government's periodic reports about recidivism rates that are unsupported. So he's what keeps me going and um, he had a simple message for all of you today which is just to thank you, to thank all of you who have been out here every year doing your part to close the prison and make sure that this is really the end and a request to, to just keep going until the very end, until the last man is out. Thank you.